The thing that really makes you for one of the best games in the world is the fact that no matter what country you play as, it's gonna be a different experience. And because of RNGesus, you're always gonna have a completely different game, even if you're playing as the same country. A country that truly is a unique experience in this game is Rugen. Right now, we started as Volgas, but we're gonna release ourselves and play as the nation of Rugen, which is an island nation with some unique mechanics that I'll show you in a few moments. First off, I'm going to be encouraging development and I'm going to use my starting mana points to develop the province of Rugen. So we start with 7 development rather than 4. And of course, I'm also going to be deleting my armies and my navies since I have to fight against Volgast for independence. Might as well make it a little bit easier for ourselves. Rival whoever did not rival us so they get less chances of allies around them. And also exploit the development in the various provinces that Volgast starts with so that when we take Gas provinces, it is less aggressive expansion for us. Don't forget to also send a juicy gift to a random nation, and actually that may Brunswick uh, want to ally us, then they, yep, shouldn't have sent that to Brunswick, should have just insulted them. But enough of the shenanigans, let's click on Rugen, play as released subject, and let's go. Look at that beautiful flag and that amazing map color. We're basically the only dark colored nation in the game right now. Don't forget to also start collecting from the two trade nodes adjacent to you, the Baltic and the uh, Lubeck nodes. The really epic part about Rugen is that you have the option of forming Pomerania and Prussia, and not just any kind of Prussia, it's gonna be a Republican Prussia, let's say. And less than a month even passed, and we got the event for the Pirates of Rugen. Of course, it is a pirate's life for me, boy. Before we continue, let's hear what our sponsor has to say. After a long day of gaming, you need rest. And now you can get it with X Sheets, the only LED powered bed sheets made for gamers. I'm just kidding, we all know you four players don't sleep, but we do enjoy a good raid, don't we? Which is why the real sponsor is Raid Shadow Legends. I've been playing Raid for a while now, and my favorite part is fighting in the PvP arena as well as spending time with my awesome clan members. There's a lot happening this month in Raid new champions, updated tag arena, and special events and tournaments. But here's the main event. Raid's running a special Deliana chase event. If you log in for 7 days between now and July 20th, you get a brand new legendary high elf champion, Deliana, for free. Deliana is one of the strongest support champions in the entire game and will help carry your team past Raid's tougher challenges. This is the time to get started in Raid. Use my link in the description or scan my QR code on the screen and you'll get a free starter pack worth $40. That includes three champions, Misericord, Tiger Soul, Romero, plus 10 Magic Force Spirit Bruce each. Also, for new players, enter promo code MYDELIANA and you get 50 XP Bruce to instantly get your legendary hero Deliana to max level plus a ton of silver. Fastest ones to use my link below can also join my clan, so don't miss out. Let's go ahead and set our leader as the admiral of these three ships and let's start start raiding the coastlines, 54 ducats from the South Baltic Sea alone, and the most juicy of plunders is the one in the Kattegat Sea or whatever this is called, 95 ducats is insane. The great part about Rugen is that it's actually the only pirate one province miner HRE nation in the game. Now we have to plan for our independence war, so we're gonna improve relations with Poland. A lot of the times Poland is willing to support our independence, 55-56 after improving relations, they'll be more than happy to support us. We also need to wait until our truce is over with the uh, nation of Olgast. And we're gonna put these 300 ducats to good use. We're gonna start getting advisors right now. Even though it's a little bit early on, it is A-OK. -okay. We're doing it simply so we get as many mana points as possible, since mana is extremely important in this game. And because we do not have our estates as a pirate republic, we need to compensate at least with advisors. Time to also start getting a spy network in Volgast. And just one month later, 55-54, Poland is already willing to support us. The best part out of all of them is that Rugen has its own mission tree. It is the default pirate mission tree, but it's just a little bit of added flavor that you wouldn't normally see. 
from a country you probably didn't even know exists. For this run, we're also going to try and mainly take the islands since we have a pretty massive debuff plus 75% state governing cost. So that means we're going to have to be playing Toll or better yet, we're going to have to be playing Islander. Oh, and to top it off, we're also Catholic. So we're going to be improving relations with the Pope because the Pope loves HRE, one province minor, pirate Catholic nations. We're also going to try and build about 10 or 15 light ships to begin with. The pirates have the pirate factions that include the buccaneers, the smugglers, and the captains, each giving out unique benefits if they are the dominating faction. So right now, the buccaneers are dominating, which offers me Republican tradition. I could be getting trade efficiency, global trade power, or morale of navy if I manage to get the other factions in charge and I can do that by boosting these factions with some diplo power, mill power or admin power depending on the faction. December 1449 we can start our war against Volgast. Let's get a secondary claim a Dariago and we can even get our second reform. Now the pirates have their unique government reforms up to tier 10 so it's quite different from your standard republics. You can get private tier efficiency from the captains, more republican tradition, or trade power abroad. I highly recommend you go for the privateer efficiency because privateering as the pirates is a really great way of getting money early on in the game. And we can now ask people to support our independence. Let's bring this guy back from improving with the Pope. Dith Martian's gonna support us, Noyce, as well as Brandenburg's gonna support our independence. And of course, last but not least, is a pools. It's a time for the Versky. We're gonna lose three stability, no problem ski. The entire Volgasti army is is actually in the same province in Rugen. I don't know why they were sitting there, but yeah, whatever. Also, don't forget before the war, you want to set your diplomatic feedback so that you have all four of the Volgasti provinces as your vital entrance provinces, which might make the AI give the provinces to you. But if they have claims like Brandenburg has, most likely they're not going to give you anything and they're going to try and take it for themselves. So you really have to just rush for these provinces before Brandenburg gets here. In fact, I recommend that you give Brandenburg an objective to attack Brunswick or whoever else is allied to Volgast. Well, they got first to the province of Volgast, so I guess I'm not gonna be taking Volgast. Same for the province of Stolp. Looks like Poland managed to get there before me. Oh, actually, Poland was very nice and they gave the province to me, even though they were the ones that sieged it first. Let's hope that Brandenburg's gonna be nice as well. What? Brandenburg actually transferred the province to me. Dude, no way. I guess after all, Brandenburg is the good guy, guys. Time to also improve our stability. No more minus three stab, at least not yet. Just wait for RNG Jesus to give us like five minus one stability events in a row. Please don't, please, really, please don't, RNG Jesus. I love you. Saxe Lauenburg, I'm gonna cancel all of their rivals and I'm gonna go for war reparations. This is obviously so I get 17 prestige. And remember, the prestige, especially in the early game and the HRE, is super valuable. We're still an HRE prince, guys. Remember that. I don't know how this would technically be legal from a historical perspective. First, First off, we got to get our independence, so grant independence and then uh, fully annex Volgast. Kind of ironic how uh, they're granting me independence and allowing me to fully annex them at the same time. Oh, look at that beautiful map, Kula. Oh, I'm having an orgasm just looking at this. I feel like deep down inside, we play this game because we just like to stare map, don't we, guys? I mean, at least I do. I'll be honest here. We're going to be rivaling Stetten, obviously, Mecklenburg and uh, Lubesch because Lubesch will likely be out our city at some point. Not just yet. I will not be going too much into the HRE itself. I'm likely going to be targeting Denmark first. I want to get their capital province and I know I'm reaching here. I'm, I'm thinking about attacking a nation that's like five times my size. Ah, uh, very nice Austria. How about you go F yourself, bruh? Looks like Sweden is very disloyal, so I expect the Swedes to go into their independence war at some point and I'm going to take advantage of that and attack the Danes myself when that happens. They're actually Actually only allied to Leinster, so it's not really that hard. I just need to get more ships than Denmark has. They got 24 right now. So the Burgundian inheritance just triggered, and you'll never guess who actually got it. It's Oldenburg. Oldenburg got the Burgundian inheritance. This is gonna be a very interesting game. I can already smell it. 
Mmm, it smells like a Burgundian egg. I'm sorry, what just happened? Holstein's an independent nation and allied to Denmark, what? And they don't have a truce with Denmark. I am so confused right now. And it's time to go raiding again, boyos. This time, we got more ships, so we're accessing a few extra provinces that we could not raid before. And we're making a ton of money, which is great because we've actually been getting a lot of loans, so we can pay off our loans now and also recruit more ships. Our naval force limit is 21. We want to at least get it up to 25 ships right now. Oh my god. They already killed Charles for real, man. Oh, that juicy Kattegatten money right there. I know it's not Kattegat. It's uh, Straits of Orsund or something. Actually, what happened is all of the lowlands got their independence. So more countries for the HRE. More countries that I'm going to get more aggressive expansion with. If I was to expand the HRE, which is not going to happen, okay? We're peaceful in this run peaceful pirates the ghost of the volgastians is back here and they're fighting me off now please give me some good rolls RNGs. jesus i love you very much yes yes oh i love those good rolls what we're gonna do now is we're gonna again go to our diplomatic feedback and we're gonna assign the three provinces here in the teutonic lands as our vital interest followed by the great attack on the teutons they have a lot of allies but we're gonna call in the poles and with a little bit of rng we might actually win this fingers crossed it's not gonna be an easy war that's for sure we're doing this because we need those exact three provinces in order to form pressure time to kill our former ally here of brandenburgium sorry boys i love you very much but um you got to go. <laughs> you got to really go. And I like the fact that the Teutons simply went for my capital without regard to the fact that I have a pretty freaking strong navy. So now you bastards are actually stuck here. Let's make sure we change this up to uh, defensiveness edict to make it a little bit harder for them to actually take this siege. Oh my lord, Poland really doesn't like the Teutons, do they? I guess Poland just committed Stack and Vapenikum, didn't they? Time to also kill off Mecklenburg's army so we can actually take him out of the war. White Peace is literally all I want from these guys. And there you go, we can even get a bit of cash from them. 9.6 ducats, which means we technically had a resounding winning against these boyos here. Mecklenburg and Brandenburg are out of the war. We White Peaced both of them, and now we've taken charge of the sieges of Königsberg and Marienburg, which means we will be able to take uh, these three provinces and the peace deal, which is what we're really in interested in since this is what we need in order to form Prussia. Marienburg has a hundred defensiveness because of the uh, monument Marlborough Castle that offers it 100 flat local defensiveness at the start as well as it can get mercenary cost reduction and garrison size as well as autonomy change in the provinces from this area. So this is a decent monument. It's great that it starts as a level 2 monument because in the long run I don't think anyone's actually gonna upgrade this to level 3 since the bonuses for level 3 are average at best and mainly affect the early game when you don't really have 5,000 ducats to invest in a level 3 monument in the first place. Speaking of that, I really hope that monuments in the next patch get a little bit of rebalancing because it would be better if they have different prices for different monuments because some of them are really just not worth 5,000 ducats ever. But if they're cheaper, then people are definitely going to be building them. And I just realized Osel is actually an island and I'm at war with the Livonians so I'm gonna take Ossel from them in this war. Let's also get our fleet so we get again evil supremacy over this area. Marienburg fell after eight freaking hundred days. Doesn't surprise me with 100% uh, defensiveness to be fair. And Königsberg also fell after 888 days. Even more than Marienburg. <laughs> Feels bad, man. If we're lucky, we're gonna be able to capture a few of their ships and make our fleet a little bit bigger than it is right now. We captured one ship apparently. I'll take it. Better than no ships after all. And another two ships captured and another one holy snaps we already have 34 ships man 23 light ships eight galleys absolutely beautiful i want to get at least 10 galleys and five transports that would be optimal for the baltic in my opinion let's see if we can get a peace deal with them now maybe if we get less money they would be okay with it actually they would be okay 
here if we get no war reparations and just the island of Osel. Plus, because we took the island of Osel, we now can raid the entirety of the northern parts of the Baltic. I was not able to raid the Gulf of Botnia and uh, the Gulf of Finland before, but now I am. Riga, I'm just gonna make you cancel all of your alliances in the hopes that someone's gonna actually end you. Three provinces, thank you very much. And let's get your money, war reparations, and cancel your alliance with the uh, nation of Brandenburg. Actually, not Brandenburg, cancel it with Mecklenburg. Let's face it though, you're gonna be gone in a few moments after this uh, deal is done and it's done. Poland's just gonna end you afterwards. Concentratio, bring all of that juicy uh, development into the Pomeranian lands. Even though we expanded our raiding range, we only got 14 ducats from this coastline. <laughs> This area is not rich, is it, guys? But this area is, as always, 98 Dukaten. And with the raiding season over, it's time to declare war on uh, Denmark. Oh, wow, Poland's gonna join us again. That is really good. Winning battles against smaller Norwegian and Danish fleets is exactly how you're gonna win this war. Try not to engage the entirety of their fleets if you can avoid it, of course. <laughs> My lord, look at that. We won, like, five battles against smaller Danish, Swedish, Norwegian fleets in a row. Rugen, Rugen rules the waves. Right? That's how the song goes, guys. We even managed to get up to 44 ships from just capturing the enemy fleets. I've been reading through the comments and I realized that I've been pronouncing this province wrong the whole time. The way you're supposed to pronounce it is Shellland, if I'm not mistaken again. Anyway, Shellland's gonna be under our possession soon. We're gonna go for this deal here, taking all of the islands from the Baltic, with the exception of Finn. That's because we have a little bit of aggressive expansion here. We want to avoid having a coalition trigger just yet. I'm might also take like one province here so I have a bit of access to the uh, British Isles. And it looks like the insolent Danes are actually trying to break away from here. We can allow that, sir. My apologies, but we cannot let that happen. There you go. Captured another two ships. <laughs> We have nine transports without having ever built a single one. So all of these are captured ones. I think we're going to need a little bit more war score, even though we took Shell Land. Might even go for the province of Lund afterwards. Going to be barraging the province of uh, Gutland. We need to take this island and it has a fort. So we need to take the fort before we can take this in the peace deal. And I believe this is the last of the Danish fleets. I really will try to kill all of their ships before we peace out. So afterwards, if they're weak enough, Sweden and Norway might even break away, which is good for me, because uh, you know that old saying, divide and conquer. And I think they agree to my terms now. 97, 94, can we get some ducats also? Nope, cannot even get a single bit of a ducat. And coalition is literally nations I already have a truce with, so nothing I need to worry about. Plus, we got renaissance in uh, shell land, so we can also embrace renaissance, I believe, or we'll be embracing renaissance. If I had checked this before and realized Finn has renaissance, I would have taken Finn instead of Lollard. But mistakes are made. Mistakes have definitely been made. Concentratio Zedenishland. Remember to also delete all of these forts on the islands. You don't need forts on islands, especially if you have a big enough fleet to defend your islands. That being said, you need to have some fortifications. Otherwise, your army tradition is going to keep going down. And the amount of fortifications depends on the size of your country. So keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah, boy, look at our increased range now. 68 more ducats from Hamburg. And like creme de la creme boys the coast of holland 157 ducats from just this one coastline unfreaking believable let's see how much we get from london 72 not bad not bad at all another 31 from the scoots i should also mention that the ship boarding doctrine which is the doctrine that we have right now is ridiculously powerful 33 percent chance capturing enemy ships equals to me getting 53 ships right here without doing too much work i built less Less than half of these bad boys. And look at that, boys. Swedish War for Independence together with the Norwegians. Oh, sorry, Novgorodians, <laughs> not the Norwegians. Hey, man, the names are similar. Don't pick on me, okay? Let's see what the world looks like into the south here. Oh, what? France actually took provinces from uh, the Castilians. And Castile is a junior partner of England? What? Holy snaps, man. Their leader is still Henry VI, the Chad Lord, 00. Zero. So how come they didn't have the English Civil War or what happened? Massively confused. Oh right, their Edward has a 5 pip. Woof man, this kind of ruined the game for the English.
English and the Castilians, didn't it? That means that Aragon's independent and apparently they're allied to Naples. Naples, what are you doing? Aragon's your enemy here, sir. Mazab just chilling, not even in the province they start in. <laughs> they migrated from Mazab to Bisca and still are alive. Granada also is alive. Doesn't surprise me when uh, Castile is actually in the pew under the English. Somehow Milan took Brescia but not Bergamo. Makes sense, I guess. It's obviously because they have a core in both of these so they can do that. But logic of AI is beyond me sometimes. And it looks like it's a cluster schnitzel of uh, wars in this area with everybody attacking everybody. Typical day in the lands of the hordes, isn't it? Let's also start lowering our autonomy now and after we core these up we'll lower from that as well. Less autonomy equals more income. I think you guys know this by now considering I mentioned this in all of my videos. Mecklenburg's pretty confident no one's gonna attack them. They're not even maintaining the fort in their capital, man. You know, it would be a big shame if somebody was to, uh, I don't know, say, attack them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. I'm not interested in Mecklenburg lands, but I want East Frisian lands. This way, I can expand my raiding activities into the north part of uh, France and then work my way into the Mediterranean, where all the big juicy provinces are. Let's actually assault the fort in Mecklenburg. We really want to take this fast so we can start uh, piecing out the other smaller nations in this war. Oh, what? They're actually assaulting it as well? <laughs> <laughs> the AI is really a lot smarter in the latest patch, I'll be fair. Way smarter than it was before and does a lot of things that you wouldn't expect the AI to do. And I just noticed what the schnapps happened to Brandenburg. When did this happen to Brandenburg actually? I didn't even notice. Magdeburg took a massive chunk, Bohemia took a massive chunk, Stetten took parts of Brandenburg. Oh my lord, I feel bad for them. Although, that does mean Brandenburg's a juicy little two province minor with a lot of cores around. Hmm, don't feel so so bad for them anymore. I might even attack them now. The guy is really really brave here. They're basically suiciding their stack in Rostock. They think they can win against me here? What? Maybe they're getting reinforcements? I don't know. Oh yeah, they're getting reinforcements. <laughs> oh god, no. This is bad. This is really really bad. Oh boy, I feel like I got debated here a little bit. Yep, let's get out of there. And of course the classic bait and stack wipe and Rugen tactic is what's gonna win us this war. Hey, where did Frisian boys go. Nobody knows. They just vanished into thin air. Come on, Mecklenburg. Do it, bro. Go to Rugen also. Both of you, go to Rugen right now. There's a lot of great stuff happening in Rugen. Ha <laughs> ha! I caught you now, East Frisia. I tricked you. There's nothing great going on here. You're gonna die now. <laughs> Avec la Rostokius Maximus. Let's go kill these boys off now. Oh no, Poland broke the alliance with us because they allied my rival Stetten. It's all good. I don't really care about Poland too much. It's not like they made this entire game, okay? I did it all by myself. <laughs> And with a little bit of persuasion, and by persuasion I mean, you know, just completely raffle stomping them. We took over East Afrosia, thus massively expanding our pirate activities, let's say. And Arrivederci Mecklenburg also got a little bit of pee pee from them because we also humiliated them. And hello French coastline, nice to meet you. How about you give me all your money now, huh? My next target will likely be Brittany, they're allied to the French and the Scots, so I'm gonna have to figure out a way of actually getting some provinces here or even France itself doesn't seem like too much of a hard nation to attack. The really great part about Rugen is that it's a really really different nation from most of your standard nations because we're not really playing tall and we're not really playing wide. We can go for different ideas this time and honestly this is probably the only time I'm gonna say this but espionage ideas is not so bad as Rugen if it be a role-playing pirate nation because it offers a extra privateer efficiency as well as aggressive expansion impact reduction since you're around the HRE not too bad as well as the ability to fabricate claims for subjects will help if you're going to be vassalizing and expanding into other areas so you can expand your pirate raiding ranges alternatively you can go exploration ideas and you can start making your way to the new world or to Asia where there's a lot of great booty to be had and plutocratic ideas also mixes in amazingly with 
with this nation since it offers a bit of military bonuses as well as some trade bonuses. Sadly, there's no achievement that I know of for this nation, but forming Pirate Prussia definitely is a unique experience in EU4. And let me know if you guys want me to do that. And check out this awesome Sweden video until the next time. And I really want to thank all my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers for the amazing support you guys have been offering. I really wouldn't be able to maintain this channel without all of your help.